Ahoy, alloy. It's metal working time, everybody. And while that sounds difficult, you will be a complete master by the end of the day. I promise you there. And why is that? Well, cause producing and using alloy here is about as simple as something can be if I'm being honest. However, some out there still might not appreciate just how the hard stuff made from other hard stuff is actually freaking amazing. So I'm here to fix that. From sneezing less to getting wet, it is time to turn up the heat. But turn it up with what beard? Well, the smelter, of course. If you can't read like me, the description says all you bloody need to know about this thing at the end of the day. However, making a smelter might not actually be all that straightforward, mind. Them red gems might be a problem, but perhaps the petrified eggs within the BFB's nest will drop one or two for ya. Or maybe one of the numerous smashing pots scattered all about Hamlet and within ancient pig ruins will provide what you need. Or even a secret room's loot might surprise you now and then with a gem or two or four along with a bunch of other stuff on occasion. In short, get a frickin' red gem any way you can, folks. Then, all that is left to do is create the dang metal maker, place it wherever you please, toss four iron into it, and boom! Alloy in mere seconds, just like that. I'm not joking, it is that easy. But Beard, how do I get the iron needed for alloy in the first place? Well, it's a fair question even though I've just freaking answered it. But here's the super quick rundown for those who didn't watch that iron guide, I suppose. For quick access to the stuff, you will want to find one of your painted biomes here, as it will give you several options for collecting iron, like straight up loose iron scattered all over the place, just right for the plundering. Many Thunderbird nests reside here, and if we scare the nesters away, we will be rewarded with a single piece of the stuff. However, you should be aware that nests are only renewable through killing the birds and then waiting for five days for their respawn, so there's that. But last Last, but certainly not least, gnat mounds can drop multiple iron per stage and are highly renewable if the gnats themselves are not killed at the end of the day, and that's good stuff. However, this is much better, mind you. Finding and mining individual pieces of the Iron Hulk can lead to infinite iron, essentially, just as long as you have the pickaxes to continue the process. It is hilariously easy to do. Especially if you choose a piece that is super easy to dodge, like the head or legs for example, and it's just gonna lead to as much iron as you bloody want whenever you need it. So you know what that means, right? That means that we can make as much alloy as we need and want to. But before we actually get to what the shiny metal is used for, here are some other unconventional methods of actually obtaining it. Smashing Hamlet City lampposts and masked pigs. To do the former, while not playing as Wilbur, mind you, isn't actually advised, unless you're planning on having the Hamlets pissed off at you for some reason, but you'll also be needing the executive hammer from the Royal Gallery anyways, so there's that. And to be honest, I don't think one alloy per lamp is going to be worth all the work to get to this point. The latter, though, isn't that great either when it comes to alloy, mind you, as secret bandit camps can only roll one piece of it as well, if you even happen to get a bandit stash map, that is. However, considering what other loot you might get from these stashes, it still might actually be worth it now and then. Just make some notes. But yes, here's where the fun begins. Alloy doesn't actually go into that much, but what it does go into is gonna help us out tremendously. Like the Hellbird here, for example. One alloy and two twigs for a melee weapon with 100 uses total at 44.2 damage a hit, all the while still being able to act as an axe at the end of the day as well. They are truly not that bad considering their cheap craft alone, and it could be hard getting a spear upgrade in Hamlet now and then, so I really wouldn't count them out. Oh, and you'll also be needing one Hellbird itself to create additional watchtowers with the key to the city in hand anyways, so make note there. The fancy helmet is next, and here's where Alloy gets stupidly good, everyone. Smash together three of it and three cork for a headgear armor that will slow you down by 20% sure. However, it will offer 1,200 durability on top of its 80% damage reduction. 
And I mean, that's pretty freaking amazing at the end of the day. It's so cheap to make, and it ranks number one in durability across all of Don't Starve history, mind you, when it comes to head armor, and it's in the top 10 for damage absorption levels across all armors anyways. So great stuff. Ah, but if head armor isn't exactly your thing, then no worries, as the tin suit here has got you covered. For three more alloy, and a hammer of all things, the tin suit will also slow us down by 20% overall, yes, but it will also offer us 80% damage reduction when worn, and yup, you guessed it, also offer us 1200 durability at the end of the day. Just stellar all around, really. And since armor stacks better in Solo Don't Starve, the two alloy armors together almost feels like cheating for Pete's sake. Have fun. But now's the time for more advanced crafts, like the oscillating fan here. At the cost of two alloy, two electrical doodads, and one gear, we can create this fantastic machine and place it where we please in order to stop Lush Season's hay fever from making us sneeze constantly. And that alone is amazing if you've ever made it to lush season and know how bloody annoying hay fever can be. However, the oscillating fan can also dry us off incredibly quickly and from a million miles away because the thing has some insane range to it, mind you. Fans are pretty great. Just good luck getting the gear in Hamlets, as you might need to buy one. Oh, but thankfully a fan doesn't actually totally break and can be refueled when needed, so you won't actually need that many gears. Good stuff. But funny enough, Alloy also goes into yet another machine best suited to helping us beat hay fever. The sprinkler here. The Alloy is very easy, as we should know by now. Ice can just be bought cheap from the shops. And as for the blue gems, just know that what I said for the red gems also applies here. But here's the gist about sprinklers. They are a machine that must be placed near water. However, you'd be surprised just how far away from water it can actually still be. So don't limit your space. You're gonna need it. Now, believe it or not, a sprinkler sprinkles water when activated. And while it can increase our wetness very quickly because of that, if we stand near it, the thing is truly meant for one thing, and one thing alone. And nettles. Nettles are a finicky bunch that need to be constantly wet in order to even think about growing. Therefore, here's where that sprinkler comes into play. It'll allow us to grow nettles outside of humid season, as it can be refueled as much as needed via anything really. So get to it, and good luck. But our last alloy craft of the day is them lampposts that we just frickin' destroyed at the start of the day, if you can believe it. Yes, everyone, we ourselves can create our very own lamppost that will allow us to just stave off the darkness. So light the way and make up for your smashing mistakes. That is, if you have the key to the city. And there you have it, everyone, a video on alloy and its uses, mind you, that is honestly just an extension of our iron video, probably. However, Alloy definitely deserves its own spotlight, I believe, so here it is. It's sturdy, it's shiny, and it's suspiciously easy to create and use in order to break Hamlet on so many levels. So get to metalworking. Thanks for watching, folks. Well wishes to all, don't schmelt away, and I'll see ya in the next one. Bye-bye.